So I'm going to show you R20's new motion tracker. It's insanely awesome and super easy to use. You can basically use it with just one click and get awesome results. Let's check it out. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go up here to Window, Customization, Layouts, and Motion Tracker. And that's going to open up this window, which is designed for motion tracking. And so the first thing you're going to do is add, I mean, click this little button down here called Motion Tracker. Bloop. Okay, so you've got that. You go over here, you click your Footage tab. And in your Footage tab, that's where you bring in your footage. So you can either use this little ellipse and uh, go find it, or if you have it open on another explorer window you can just click that and drag that in now I'm dragging mine in it's an MOV it's from my DJ Osmo pocket uh, it's a pretty cool little camera but um, you don't stabilize it or anything just bring it in you know raw basically I mean if you want to color correct it if it's gonna make your contrast and stuff a little better uh, you can but don't stabilize it uh, you want to keep it kinda shaky with the natural shakes that's actually good for tracking um, also, what's good for tracking, if you notice, um, I have this clear foreground area. This is where I'm going to put my, my object. I've got a tree here. I've got a car here. I've got a building back here. I've got background behind the building. And I move forward and to the right. And I rotate left. So I kind of just basically walk around the curve of this. But that's going to be key as far as like selling the fact that it's 3D rather than just like if I was just doing a push in or a pull in, I could fake it with just a 2D image. But the fact that I actually go over here and look back this way from a different perspective at it, that's what's going to make it. What? Is that really there? It's pretty cool. So before we get started, let me show you what I did with this shot. Uh, I put in the Batmobile here and I didn't put any effort into this honestly I did a lot in the lighting and the materials and whatnot way more than doing the track the track I basically hit a few buttons and boom got it and that's what I'm going to show you how to do here's our shot we're walking down the sidewalk and we're going to kind of pan to the left here a little bit and see so you can see you know you've got this building here you've got this street post you've got the front of this curb at the beginning of the shot, but by the end, like you've lost this tree, this lamppost is gone, the beginning of the curb is gone. So you've got a pretty good range. I probably went about 15 feet. And so you think, that's, that's a pretty long track. And I'll show you how easy and how good Cinema 4D is at doing this. See this button down here called Full Solve? Click. And then you let it go. Now, granted, I knew that I was going to be tracking this shot. I always have your end goal in mind when you shoot it. I knew I wanted to put something right there. Uh, I didn't put any markers down. I could have, but I wanted to see just how it did without that. Honestly, just natural tracking. So now that your scene has finished solving the 3D camera, you've got all these little pink diamonds everywhere with little blue tails. Um, they're swimming around. Whee! You can tell, you know, we got some good trackers. Some of these up here are really solid because they're staying in there a long time. It's really good. But some of these on the ground are kind of hopping around. And that's okay. For what we're going to do, I think we've actually got enough. We can go into detail later on of how to fix a lot of the stuff. But honestly, for pushing this button, we're in great shape. So what we're going to do next is create a position constraint. And we're going to click one of these that's kind of off in the, even with the horizon, and it was a good track, kind of about eye level. Okay, and that's just going to kind of help our camera know that that's a Z, that's, that's back there, kind of. So then we're going to create a planner cons constraint, and we're just going to connect these three little guys. Basically, this is just going to draw a polygon, so we're going to connect the dots, bloop, on the plane. There we go. Boom. Ground. See how that made a plane on the ground? And actually, to make an actual plane exactly where that is, we're going to hit Create Plane. Boom, look at that. Oh, there it is. And see, now that we've clicked off of our motion tracker, we actually see all of our little dots, little bullseyes everywhere. And the brighter the green, the longer the life of the track, and so the better track. The redder ones are weak, so they're not as good of a track. They're not going to be there for very long. So when cool thing, what's the coolest thing about this besides just putting a plane in exactly where you drew your 
polygon is actually that if you click off of this, make sure you're not clicked on that still, you can grab your plane, and as long as you're in your object space and not the world space, you can just move it up. So let's say I want this right here. Let's say I had like a crack here and some lava was going to come out. So you can tell up, up close, it's about right here. So we should walk past it. That's pretty good. It's not perfect. So here's here's what's going on. I don't think it knows our ground plane is actually at an angle a little bit. You see here. If you look at it in the side, you see our sidewalk kind of slopes up. And our plane does not. So let's take that. Put it in world review. Let's rotate that just a little. Bring that up. Just a little... Little adjustment here. Let's see what that looks like. Does that look pretty good? Yeah. That looks pretty good. It might be a little rotated a little low. We'll see. Okay. Bloop. Oh, that's, that's definitely better. Yeah, let's rotate it this way just a bit. It's great trippy illusions. That's definitely better. Look at that. Yeah, there we go. So sometimes you just gotta fiddle around with it. Basically, R20 lets you just push this motion tracker button, bring in your footage, hit full solve, and then with a few clicks, you can be tracking stuff in your scene like that. No third party plugins, no nothing. And you can see it live on your footage. And you can even edit, like if you decided this is too long or whatever, you can cut this down, you can do that. It's awesome. Yeah, there you go. Play around with that. Let me, you know, share what you did. Let me see what you've done. I'd love to, to check it out and see what people do. All right, thanks for watching. See you later.